I should probably also take a look and see what is what is the price of the next couple islands. 350, 280, 270. Uh never mind. Oh, the price does actually go up. The more islands you get. Maybe I should could have should have considered other things. Let's see, did I ever find the meter I was looking for in Portland? No, but I do actually have some uh, hard cider downstairs that I should probably crack open. Now that I'm thinking about it. We actually bought, uh... Was it Mango Cello? As well? Uh, there's a Trader Joe's in the same, uh... Like, 20 minutes away from us. And in Oregon, they sell liquor. Uh, mo well, no, not liquor. They they sell, uh, wine and, like, I mean, honestly, mostly it's wine, but they have, like, some hard ciders, hard lemonades, and stuff like that. And so, uh, specifically, we've picked up two different things, and then we've been sort of saving them, uh, for a special occasion, which should probably stop doing, because, you know, they're not actually that expensive. It's, like, six bucks for a bottle. I'm just bad and I'm, I'm like, no, I'll drink it I'll drink it on a on a on a specific day. And it's like, no 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 no. Dumb wander. Just just drink your booze. You got plenty. There's a meteorite called fringe around in the area. Yeah, I We just haven't been like in a position to do exploring. So we needed to go out and get a couch today. That was our number one uh goal. And so we went to Oops. I killed a chicken. Ah, eh, whatever. It had a good life. Just existing for a bit. I don't know. But, uh, t -t -t we had to get a couch because Shell's grandmother is visiting in a little over a month. Uh, end of May. And she doesn't want to stay in a hotel. Uh, for reasons? Yeah, the, the family, I think... Mm. Is your family staying with us too? Okay. Yeah, the whole family's staying with us. No hotels. You know, obviously kind of expensive to fly over. So they're going to be on like the couch and the air mattresses and so on and so forth. Which is fine. Uh, let's see. But, you know, we needed some place to put her grandmother as well. Because an air mattress is not great for a 80-something year old woman. Uh, so we have gone out and actually purchased a couch. This should actually double as a great recording couch for me once, uh, once, you know, the visit is done. But that needed to be done because it actually takes a little while for, for couches to be delivered and stuff. Assuming, you know, they don't have, like, stuff in inventory. Oh, damn it. And so that was, that was our goal. And the next thing, we gotta get, like, license and registrations and, like, all sorts of stuff for vehicles, because we've already been here for a while. And... It's like... Man, life just is like... Not not ready to give me a break time-wise yet. That is a lot of wood. I probably should have expanded my like workable area a little bit, but I've got like tons of land. Let's see, if I listen to the music you sent me recently... Nope, I haven't... I haven't had... I have not had any discretionary time for anything. I haven't even been able to do artwork lately, and I need to do artwork for my, like, series. If you've noticed, like, my my EDF series on, on YouTube is, uh, is currently using placeholder art using the previous game's thumbnail. And it's, uh, it looks fine, but, like, I like having custom thumbnails for series that I really enjoy. And yeah, I've just had no time to even work on that stuff, let alone, like, even sort through. I'm just finally starting to go through my inbox. Post, uh, post packs and be like, okay, so what have, uh, you know, what are the, what are the handful of things that I, I missed along the way and I'm trying to cover what I can and, like, respond to the emails that I should have and so on and so forth. It's going Okay. But it's like, it's stupid time consuming. Eventually I'll have like a totally regular normal schedule again, but... 
Ugh, the more in interruptions I have, the, the worse everything is. Okay, yeah, poor BusyBot. I, I'm mostly fine. It's just like, every once in a while, I just have like a month or a year where I'm just like, oh god, how do I, how do I have enough time for any of this? Okay, so let me take a look at these. I should probably tear them up. I'm actually going to tear this one up. Okay, we get the steel back. I'm just gonna get rid of the poop. I know there's one guy that really likes poop, but I care not. Okay. That's probably fine placement. That should cover most of every island between all of these. Ow. Damn it, that's what I get for not paying attention. Yeah, so one mining rod in the center of every other island should be enough to more or less cover everything. And then the other the other thing that kind of always puts me back is I'm I'm trying to attempt to have more of a social life uh, this year, so I'm going to be doing at least some amount of socialization here and there. We might have something on Friday, but I gotta figure out if it's, like, not a social faux pas for me to show up. Because... It's like the one dude I don't know. I'm like, well, I could probably just show up and nobody would care. But I want to make sure nobody would care. Because it'd be bad if I was just that guy and I'm like, hi, I'm here now. And they're like, uh... This was a pri more private event. I'd be like, oh, well, shit. Uh, have a cheesecake. I mean... Honestly, that's kind of how you meet people, and, like, it's fine, but I don't know. I want to be a cool dude. I don't want to be that guy that just shows up. I'm, I'm going to be that guy no matter what, just because that's how I function. I tried, uh... I tried doing a... a I tried introducing myself to the completionist... Uh, a couple weeks ago at the YouTube Mixer. I made an absolute ass of myself. It wasn't actually, like, that big of a deal, but I was just like... I came away from it being like, man, I am not smooth. So you wonder if you're to do a D&D &D campaign again. Would you rather be the DM or the character? Probably DM. Uh, so... I am in a kind of convenient position in, in life. Uh, where I'm not a bad, like, world builder or storyteller or anything like that, so, uh, being the DM is kind of fun. Uh, and then it's also one of those where I can do custom artwork for everything. Maps, characters, items, you name it, like, I, I can and will draw it as part of, you know, what I'm working on. Whoops. And so... If I can actually... If I can actually be the DM, I can sit down and say, Alright, here's what everything looks like. There's no ambiguity. And I realize that, like, D&D is a huge thing about imagination. But, like, for me, I don't know. I It's a fun project to just sit down and have, like, just a shit ton of art for, for a whole campaign. And it's harder to do that as a player. You know, I, I can kind of help the DM out, but, you know, they might not want to spoil stuff and whatnot. Or maybe they do. Maybe they don't care. But yeah, I'd love to actually be a player in a campaign. I think I'd actually be a much better player now that I've been a DM for a while. Because I kind of understand it better. I think when I would... Originally when I played D&D... I liked it, but I could never get into it. And now that I've been a player, I think... I realize now that I've been a DM, I realized my biggest failing as a as a player of D and D was I was just playing a video game, but on a tabletop, and I was enjoying it, but I didn't get into it in the way, same way that I did until recently. And I I wasn't role playing enough, and I think I needed to role play harder, and actually make my character into somebody, uh, even if they're not necessarily like the most interesting character. Having a character to play in D&D &D makes a massive difference as opposed to just like I am the half elf half, half elf rogue no I am 
I am an outgoing halfling barbarian from a Silk and Spices trade galley who killed their brother in a duel over inheritance. Sorry, I just used a website to roll that one out. But, like, that is a character. That has some growth there. As opposed to just being, like, you know, kind of a power-mad uh, dwarven... I mean, admittedly, it was a dwarven luchador. Like, there was some... There was some potential there, but I was not in the right campaign for it. Uh, for that character, at least. Hey, thank you, Drunken, Drunken Legends, for the two-month resub. How is life? Um... But, like, I also know that I'm a decent DM, and I would rather bite the bullet and not be a player and be a good DM than be a player for a bad DM. Because that would be less satisfying for me. And not worth my time. That's my problem. Is that, like, I have a very limited amount of time. Ah, uh, and it makes life harder for me. So let's let's grab flower press. At this point, I kind of need it. Okay, so is it masonry? No, it's like over here somewhere. I'm just gonna go down, grab masonry, and we'll see see if that's it. Because one of these makes it so you get coal. Oh wait, twenty five percent chance to find coal when? Oh, that's digging. Never mind. Let's see. But, like, I have such a limited amount of time. I, we've had this conversation eternally that, you know, somebody will be like, hey, have you done this? Or do you have time for this? Or when are you going to play this next? And I'm like, ah, weeps, weeps into my calendar. Uh, and so it's much easier for me. I, there's nothing worse than committing my time to a project that ends up being a massive waste of time. Like... If it leads to my own personal growth and development, it's not so bad. Or if it was fun, it's not so bad. And even if it's a complete bust for YouTube, like, if I enjoyed myself, that's okay. But it's... I don't want to, like, say, play D&D &D and be bored. Because if I'm bored, that means I... It's not... Why am I there to begin with? And I've, I've done a couple of D&D &D campaigns like that in the past. Uh, very specifically, I was once in a... The only time I, like, quote-unquote seriously played D&D &D in college... Uh, I, I tried a couple of times. I tried an amount. I should have DM'd. Uh, but one of the first times I tried playing D&D &D in college, I think I was a freshman. And more or less, like, I immediately realized that it was a campaign filled with power gamers... And their idea of fun was pretty different from mine. So we need four steel. Okay, I'll work on that. Uh, so effectively what happened was uh, the campaign started and they're like, okay, so we need a cleric. You're going to be the cleric. Okay. But you're going to use charisma as a dump stat. There's not going to be a whole lot of undead on this campaign. Okay. Okay. So, that means low charisma, just like, you know, half the other members of the party. This is the sorcerer. Or was it a sorcerer? I think it was a sorcerer. Because they didn't... This is the kind of party that thought uh, bards were useless. Because bards are weaker than sorcerers in a direct fight. And, you know, they're... Since charisma is their, their main, main stat, you know, they can be the face of the party. Which is true. You know, generally, you do kind of want your, like, really charismatic character... To be the one doing a lot of the schmoozing. Uh, just because common sense. But in this case, it was... No, the sorcerer was the only person allowed to even talk to other NPCs. Uh, and because I was the the cleric, I wasn't allowed to... Well, I was the healer. Uh, I wasn't allowed to pick up any spells that weren't healing. So, even though, like, I could channel healing spells because that's how it worked in third edition uh i wasn't allowed to because we might need healing so it very quick quickly became apparent that my entire role was to nap until they woke me up asking for a healing spell at which point i decided screw this i originally i started just playing flash games and stuff and then i realized yeah that's boring and just left And, yeah, I mean, obviously, that's 
that's a super edge case for a D&D campaign. But it's something that I, I've kind of committed to never doing again because it was not fun. That's not power gaming, that's power controlling. They kind of... Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, I am a power gamer. Even... I mean, in most video games I play, I, I try and, like, min-max the hell out of things. I mean, look at this right now. Like, I, I've already I've already automated myself out of a proper job uh, in this game. I'm not even playing the... I, I'm not even doing gameplay anymore. I'm just kind of standing around waiting for resources to just suck into my butt. And then I can, you know, progress and do some things. I should probably get those vaults down next. But, yeah, so I've always wanted to kind of avoid that. I've also really, I've also had DMs that had no idea for like a cohesive plot and just kind of overwrote the whole thing to the point where like none of the player characters mattered. Uh, and it was just kind of like this weird, weird like parade of just like, oh, this is what the DM thought of. Well, that's neat, but where do I fit in this? And they're like, uh, I don't know. You can kind of do this thing. You know, when, like, the only plot progress happens because the DM just kind of railroads you? No, admittedly, sometimes that is absolutely the player's fault. Uh, specifically, one of the other campaigns I did when I was in uh, college, it was... Uh, so I was on a floor of primarily dudes uh, for the first three years. And it was fun. You know, it wasn't actually, like, this big problem or anything like that. The problem was... Uh, when we started playing D&D &D together, it very quickly became apparent that, uh, that people weren't taking it seriously. And that's fine. Uh, but it was one of those where, oh, how, how did it go down? Effectively, imagine if every single party member was a murder hobo barbarian. Like, I'm not actually sure if anybody wasn't a barbarian in this party. It was that, like, one-sided of a setup. I'm gonna put away the oranges. I'm pretty much just gonna exist off of fish. Oh! Those icons! Oh my god, that's amazing! Let's get another one of these. Like, I'm pretty close to getting another mining rod, but we'll save that for the flower press, I think. But yeah, so, everybody was a murder hobo and the DM didn't really know how to deal with it. And so, like, half the time we'd be, like, introduced to some interesting plot point and everybody would just immediately try and murder it. For people that don't know the term a murder hobo, murder hobos are, I mean, effectively your standard, like, CRPG player that skips through all the, or CRPG player, RPG player that skips through all the dialogue and just immediately goes off to fight whatever. Uh, I guess easy example would be if you went the, uh, evil path in Fable is pretty close. Let's see. But yeah, so, uh, it was, it was fun. I mean, for those of you, I guess that, uh, that saw my previous campaign. It's if everybody was Greg, but didn't bother talking to anyone and just immediately started attacking. Like, pretty bad. Uh, so the poor DM was trying to figure out how to keep us, like, behaving. And I was like, I was the Swiss Army Knife because I knew nobody else was going to pay attention. Shell was the only person that bothered to talk to a single uh, NPC in the game and actually care. Because I was, I was a robot octopus. Technically, I was a Warforged Druid, but I just stayed wild-shaped as Octopus forever, because it was great. Um, and so, yeah, the, the poor DM was just, I'm not going to say overwhelmed, but it very clearly was, like, not the right matchup. And so I felt bad for her. Yeah, like, every single plot point got derailed. I'm not sure if I, we ever had any kind of satisfying arc. And then the whole party killed themselves and then got really... Uh, really busy for finals and just never reconvened. Oh, let's see. Okay, right. Yeah. Yeah, they were, like, actively trying to, uh, get the, like, hand and eye of Vecna. Didn't go great. Okay, there it is. Mining? No, they dropped more minerals. It's close. It's, it's close to mining. 
One more level and I think we'll get all the coal I think we need. I guess actually, how many gold ingots can I make? A bunch? We might as well start expanding islands here. Because with all this extra range, I should be at least... Wow, that's a lot of slimes. There's a lot of extra room to wiggle around. Wanda, did you ever read the web novel Worm? I I think I've read the first chapter about four times, and then I never get past it. Uh, it's absolutely one of those series that you have to get into, but the problem is Worm is one of those series that I, I want to read more of, but every time I start reading it, I immediately sit down and I'm like, nope, I want to go write my own freaking book instead of, you know, reading this instead. And then I start writing a book, and then I throw the book out, and then kind of rinse repeat. Oh, uh, let's see. There we go. That's another thing. Like, I have that problem with a lot of books. Unless it's a novel that I know I can read in like two sittings i actually can't really get into longer things so like for example i've never read game of thrones or wheel of time uh because they're they're too long for me not because it can't hold my attention but because i well yeah actually it can't hold my attention that reading them isn't worth my time compared to you know how much i could zip through i mean a video game admittedly or uh, shorter books. So recently I, I read through a book called uh, Kings of the Wild that I really enjoyed. And that's, you know, probably one of my favorite books. And I've got a book sitting on my end table that I actually want to start reading as part of a, uh, a an attempt at putting together some kind of like YouTube book club. Because I think that would be really fun. But I haven't had time to sit down and do it. I should. And, you know, once I'm done, like, settling in around here, it won't be so bad. And hopefully, we won't have to, like, move too far in a year. Or we won't have to move at all in a year because we actually like this place. I don't know. Let's see. But, yeah. The last D&D horror story that I can specifically, I guess, talk about for why I want to DM is I had one DM, and she was she was not a good DM. She was, I think, the worst DM I've ever had, because she was she was a power DM. She was there to kill the party, because that is how she had fun. Like Gygax, Gygax's, uh, you know, old campaign settings and dungeons and stuff are like ridiculous and not fun to some degree. But at least they were, like, kind of relatively doable-ish, if you knew what you're doing. Oh, assuming your your DM isn't cheating or something like that. Uh, this, this DM specifically, she wanted the party to die and killed everyone but me. And the only reason why she didn't kill me is because I'm a cheaty munchkin that comes up with, like, broken builds because, it, you know, because I enjoy it. Oh, I should probably go get that uh, flower shrine going. Also coins. And so... You know... Oh, what exactly happened? I think we did three sessions. And the first session... Half the party died. Made new characters. The second session... The rest of the party died and... Everybody that made new characters. Their characters died. And these are only like three hour sessions. And this is like a big 10 person party too. And it was usually like to goblins or like highwaymen or something like that. It's not like we're fighting some like evil horde that like you need to, you need to like make a last stand or some kind of red shirt, red shirt situation where everybody's just dying left and right because of a fun joke. And you're supposed to kind of like have a continuity despite. And so. I remember specifically doing somewhere around 56 damage to, like, just some dude. It wasn't even, like, a plot point character. And this is, like, we're level 2 tops. 
We might have still been level one, but I, I got him with a crit sneak attack with like a... I don't even remember what weapon it was, but it did times three damage and like... I whammoed something real hard. And it didn't die. It... According to the DM, it didn't even seem particularly wounded. And I'm like, really? Like, I have 12 HP and I did... I could have killed myself almost five times over with this hit. You know, how is this guy still standing and she just didn't have an answer for me? And I'm like... All right, uh, sure. I'm gonna go hide. And she's like, roll a, uh, you know, how do you hide? And I'm like, I run this direction, hide behind that. And she's like, all right, roll, move silently, sneak, whatever. You know, just effectively, she was trying to not exactly l lawyer me out of it, but uh, more or less trying to make it so that if I roll bad, it would go badly because the whole party died the next round, effectively. And, uh... And I rolled a nat 20 on the, the hide or the move silently or something like that. Like, I rolled high on both and was more or less un unfindable. Unless, like, she really fudged the rolls. And I think she tried, but I was just like, no. Like, I think we had a small argument over, like, whether or not they could find me on the nat 20. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure I picked a pretty good hiding spot and they're busy butchering the rest of the party. Ah. Uh, and I think there was, like, some level of, like, passive shame of, like... You know, shouldn't shouldn't you be with the party? I'm like, they're all dead. And then they all died. And it's like, yep. Let's see. No, it's still no coal from this one. It's somewhere down here. But yeah, it was it was stupidly deadly and it wasn't very fun. And pretty much the only reason why anybody else stuck around was because they were so drunk they didn't care. Uh, but I wasn't that... Well, no, I was drunk, but I played so much D&D that I did care. That I'm like, you know, this game is sacred to me, practically. And so, yeah, messing it up this bad was not a happy feeling for me. And so I, I pretty much was... Was, yeah. <laughs> I was not pleased. And so, pretty much after that session, I just, like, washed my hands of the whole thing. And I'm like, yeah, no... You're not worth it. Then then she was uh, one of the people that like directly got me kicked out of the frat. And I'm like, yeah, all right. You were a cool friend uh, when you weren't kind of a dirtbag. She was kind of a dirtbag. There are a lot of dirtbags there. I'm bad at identifying dirtbags. Yeah, Shell, Shell smells dirtbags. I can't smell shit. <laughs> Okay, so we want to get up to 800 coins. I'd also like to get a flower press. Let's get the flower press first, because it might have the more useful perks. Select half? 65? It's excessive, but I don't need that many. But yeah, so I, I'd never want to be in a D&D &D campaign with a DM like that, unless unless it's just explicitly like planned out ahead of time that, yeah, this is going to be a really hard campaign. But hard but fair... If it's ever, like, if it ever feels unfair, that's usually the point when I'm like, yeah, I just don't want to be here anymore. So I think we're going to head for the skeleton area. I'm not... There's some things that we need from the, uh... There's some things that we need from... Ow. Didn't that guy just, like, double charge? I don't know, whatever. we got plenty of fairies in the area. Yeah, I think I'm gonna head for the skeleton area so we can get the better pick at the very least. Yeah, 56. She should have rolled for instant death save from massive damage. Oh, no, 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 no. Only the players had to deal with that. That is actually what killed my character in the end. Uh, is I got hit for 11 damage or something like that, which is like 90% of my health. And she's like, yep, that, that would be massive damage. And I'm like, what? I, I never use that rule. I, I think that kind of rule is ridiculous. Sort of? I don't know. I Instant death on players should only be if they're in a position where... Uh, only if they're in a position where they're doing something ex egregiously stupid or egregiously heroic. And never just like a regular fight. Like, if I'm fighting a dragon and I decide to hop down its throat and stab it as it's breathing fire... Or, like, you know, chuck some kind of explosive compound in there. Yeah, okay, that's pretty much instant death for my character. 
but at least I go out with a really cool bang. Uh, or, you know, if I just decide to dive down the, the dragon's gull in an attempt to stab it to death from the inside. Like, that's a little dumber. Maybe if I made it to the stomach and passed the, uh, the fire bag, whatever. I mean, dragon anatomy is a little bit murky for me, but, you know, there's definitely some things that you could do there. That, uh... There are definitely some things that you could do there uh, in either direction that, like, justify, you know, instant player death. But honestly, for me, I, I'm much more of the, like, you got knocked out. And, like, if you took too much damage, you might lose, like, a limb. And, yeah, obviously, if you if you take, like, well past your current or maximum HP, okay, yeah, that's that's the sort of thing. But usually, if a player takes that much damage, I have to think about... Why did that player take that much damage? And, you know, examine like, okay, so how did I harm this player that much? And was that fair? Because I, I don't know. My campaigns are probably a little bit easy most of the time. Because uh, I hate downtime. I hate resting until healed. That always drove me up the walls. And like kills all tensions like, well, we took too much damage there. Uh, time to go back and sleep for 20 hours. It's like, ugh. I actually have that problem in Outward lately. It's a fun game, but it's like... It's just such a slog trying to get all my maximum maximum HP back. That doesn't feel good. Yeah, Critical Wounds is fun. Losing an arm, face, etc. Yeah, that's actually a mechanic that I really want to bring bring into future campaigns, but like in very limited, limited use. Like, I don't want it to be like, you got hit in the face, you now have this like gaping wound and it leaves a scar forever. But like... You know, I want characters to care about how their... I, I want players to care about how their character changes over the course of gameplay. Uh, and I think, you know, some amount of, like, physical wounds or, like, magical changes or even, like, physical... Just, like, standard physical changes actually would, like, really increase... Uh, immersion, I guess? Players hate permanent negatives. I think it. I think it's a mix. I think if you give the player an easy out or a relatively quick out, like your character is lost an arm, but you know within a couple of like a session or two, you can get like a new arm or something like that. Or you know, I I guess it really depends on the context of the campaign. Because as long as, like, as long as everybody's for it and kind of understand it, and it doesn't feel, like, outlandish, then I think it's okay. It's just kind of like the un unspoken social contract of, like... You know, what is expected of the DM and the campaign and so on and so forth. And if you start breaking that, eh, it gets a little dicey. Okay, let's get that, uh... Actually, I've probably got a boatload of wood now. Let's fill this out. 